Selecting the right keyboard rig for your worship band can be a daunting task. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the setup we use at our church plant. Rather than spending thousands of dollars on a Nord, Roland, or Yamaha flagship keyboard, we are able to produce amazing sounds with an inexpensive MIDI keyboard controller and main stage running on a MacBook Air. Keep watching this video and you'll know exactly what to buy and how to set this up at your church. This video is brought to you by Lead Worship with Ableton, a free training to help you get started with the number one worship leading software. With Ableton Live, you can run a click, backing tracks, and automate lyrics and lighting. It's the best tool for increasing excellence and eliminating distracting mistakes in worship. Click the link in the description to enroll in the free training today. My name is Jake Goslin with churchfront.com, an online resource for innovative and creative church leaders. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you can receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church. Check out the show notes below for links to free resources for your worship ministry. Question of the day, what keyboard rig do you use at your church? I love learning from you guys and hearing from you, so let me know below in the comments. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the keyboard setup we use at the small church plant where I lead worship. I am not a professional keyboardist. I'm a worship leader and I'm a guitarist. But as the worship leader, it's my responsibility to make sure my volunteers who play keyboard have the best tools available to produce the best sound possible. I wanted to build a rig that can reproduce the sounds we hear today on most modern worship albums. Those sounds include piano, of course, pad, synth, organ, and other bassy type sounds that can either sound very delicate or sound big and epic. There are two key pieces to any keyboard rig. The first piece is the hardware, which is the physical keyboard itself that you play on, and the second piece is the software, which produces the sounds. There are a couple options for how you can go about combining hardware and software for a keyboard rig. First, you can buy a keyboard that combines the hardware and software into one. While this setup is portable and convenient, there are a couple issues. In order to have a keyboard with a high quality sound built in, you need to spend a lot of money on a high-end Nord, Roland, or Yamaha flagship piano. Most churches, though, cannot afford that. So instead, churches buy cheap keyboards with sounds built in that are only a few hundred dollars and they they end up not sounding very good and they can't produce the wide variety of pad and synth sounds that we need in a modern worship context. The second way to build a worship keyboard rig is to purchase the hardware and software separately. That's what I did to set up the keyboard rig for my worship band. There are several advantages to this. First, you can buy an inexpensive MIDI keyboard controller from M Audio or Akai. In our setup, we use the M Audio Hammer 88. Since that keyboard is packed away right now where we store our church gear during the week, in this example, I'm going to show you how I have it set up with the M Audio Keystation 49. It's cheap and tiny, but it gets the job done. And remember, MIDI keyboard controllers do not produce actual sound. You will plug the keyboard into a laptop with a USB cable, and the laptop will be producing the actual sound. Next, we have a MacBook Air with MainStage installed on it to run our keyboard sounds, also known as patches. MainStage is available for $30 in the Mac App Store. Sorry, PC users. Mainstage is not available on Windows. However, you don't need a super powerful Mac to run Mainstage. The MacBook Air we have is a used 2014 model with only 8 gigabytes of RAM. We've never had any performance issues. Once you have Mainstage installed on your computer, you can start using the piano and pad sounds built into the software immediately. That is what we did for a few months at our church plant. But recently, I purchased Worship Essentials 2 by ThatWorshipSound.com. Worship Essentials 2 is a template of pre-made Mainstage stage patches that are designed specifically for worship. I've included a link below to another video where the creator of these patches demos all the sounds. The bundle of 20 patches costs only $40, which is an incredible value. Once you purchase and download the bundle, you can simply open up the main stage concert file and bam, you have amazing worship keyboard patches ready to go. Let's talk a little bit more about cost. Assuming you already have a Mac computer available, it only costs $30 for main stage and $40 
this for Worship Essentials too. And let's say that you purchase a MIDI keyboard like the one we use at my church for $400. For less than $500 total, your church can have a phenomenal worship keyboard rig. If you went and spent $500 on a typical keyboard that has sounds built into it, you'd have a very mediocre rig. So to me, it's a no-brainer. Even if you buy an additional laptop to run main stage, you can find a used MacBook Air for less than $1,000. In the end, this setup is still a fraction of the price for a flagship Nord, Roland, or Yamaha keyboard. But I'm not done showing you how cool this setup is. At my church, we use Ableton Live to run a click, tracks, and automate lighting and lyrics in worship. If you've been following my channel for any time now, you know I'm a huge Ableton Live geek. Ableton Live can also control different features within main stage. It can queue up the right main stage patches at the right time so my keyboardist doesn't have to worry about selecting the right sound. Ableton can also tell main stage what tempo a song is in so that the delays and arpeggiators align exactly with the click in Ableton Live. Here's an example of what this looks like. In last week's worship set, we opened up with You Are Life by Hillsong Worship. At the beginning of the song, I queue up the right patch in Worship Essentials 2. It's a high energy arpeggiator, and notice that the tempo Intro, in main two, stage three, matches four. the tempo in Ableton Live. At the end of the song, I queue up the ambient piano patch because I'm going to lead the congregation in a little transitional call to worship before we start singing the next song, 10,000 reasons. Once again, the tempo and main stage changes to match Ableton Live. The final thing I want to touch on is how to get audio from your Mac to your sound system. You'll need a 3.5 millimeter to dual quarter inch cable, a stereo DI box, and two XLR cables to plug into your stage snake or sound console. With this setup, you have a left and a right channel from your computer. It's not totally necessary to have the stereo set up, but it can be nice if you have patches that have panning features in them. I hope you now see that a phenomenal keyboard sound is achievable with with a simple MIDI controller, main stage, and Worship Essentials 2 by ThatWorshipSound.com. In all of this you can buy on a fairly modest budget. ThatWorshipSound.com did not pay me to promote their product, I just love it that much. As a worship leader who just wants to easily implement the latest and greatest in worship tools for my team, this one was a no-brainer from the second I heard the demo of these worship keyboard patches. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to learn the number one worship leading software, enroll in my free training Training, lead worship with Ableton linked below in the description. You can also download my worship ministry toolkit, which contains links to everything covered in this video. If you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button and share it with your friends. You can also check out some other cool videos over here and don't forget to subscribe to the Church Front channel so you can receive all of our latest content to help you grow yourself and grow your church.